tightness testing. My name's Alan Hart and today I've been invited to Viva Trading Academy and we're going to show you a tightness test. I've got the, an expert trainer today, Russ, the expert trainer, and he's going to show us how to do a tightness test on a U6 and a G4 meter, a low pressure um, system. So yeah, let's go and have a look. Thank you, Alan, for that. Uh, my name's Russ at Viva Training Academy. This morning, we're hoping to take you through, but well, we're definitely going to take you through, uh, tightness testing, the basics at least, and uh, we'll build up from there. My experience is 40 plus years in the gas industry, and the last 20, two or three in training specifically. Mainly uh, domestic, but also commercial. Why do we tighten this test? Obvious reasons really, to make sure we're not leaking any gas, but also for other reasons. We're looking at pressures, we're looking at the installation in general, and we're also inspecting, has it been installed correctly before we even do a tightness test. What we have here is a, a typical meter installation, although there are a number of faults on it. And this is something you need to be looking for before you start even doing your tightness test. Various obvious things to a, a gas engineer that will become second nature to you as you go along. The main tap itself, is it secured correctly? Simple things. Does it fall to the off. What we mean by that is, should it be knocked, it would go, it would close, not open by accident. There should be a label here saying which direction to move that lever in. All faults that should be rectified as you, as you go along. Meter regulator, is it sealed? The meter itself, is it secure? And when we move outwards from there onto the main pipe work, there should be what we call earth bonding. In other words, a connection to the main electrical circuit should there be any stray current which would go straight, which would trip the uh, safety devices. It should be visible. It may not be visible, but it should be visible for the gas engineer to be able to know it's there. Uh, if it's not, We'll come to later, it's just paperwork exercise, but we need to cover it. It should ideally be before the first branch or the first T on the pipe work. Um, if there's only one pipe within the first 600 millimetres of the metre outlet. You're also looking for this label on the front of the metre. There should be details on here who to contact in the event of a gas escape. That is also a legal requirement. That's already on when the meter comes, but they have been known to come off. They have been known to come adrift. You're looking for obvious signs of damage uh, in, in, all, in all shapes and sizes, really. Prior to doing the tightness test, we'll turn the gas off before making any connections with the uh, YouTube gauge or whatever gauge we're using. Right, installing the, the uh, YouTube gauge, always difficult to find somewhere to uh, secure it. In this particular case, we're taking the pipe around the back freeze up. Right, you can find somewhere to stand it up, hang it up. They do come with a stand quite often. Uh, there's various ways you can fasten that up. The screw on the uh, meter, a test point on the meter, it shouldn't be tight. If it is tight, uh, don't put it that so tight afterwards. They are only a, a small screw and they do snap off quite easily. Um, the YouTube gauge, we've always, always already checked to make sure the integrity of the gauge is good. You won't be the first engineer to spend a, a while looking for a leak that's on your own equipment. Always check your own equipment first. Putting the gauge onto the meter, and that's the basics. Um, over, already zeroed the uh, meter and uh, the gauge, should I say, and that's ready to test. The test we're doing uh, is, is from a document known called IGEUP1B. We do get off these names. 
This organisation, Institute of Gas Engineers, now do all the testing standards. Uh, they don't read very well, but they actually are very good, good publications um, once you get your head around them. The actual installation, the actual test itself, is a very simple process and it becomes second nature. It will become second nature. I will keep saying that, I know. But, uh, um, so, what we're going to do first is a let by test. Why do we do a let by test? We're trying to prove the integrity of this valve. Why do we need to prove the integrity? We want to know is the valve sound in itself? Is it passing any gas through it? If that valve is passing gas, it could mask a small leak on the system. If it's leaking as much as it's passing, you'd never know it had a gas leak. So we need to prove, first of all, is that valve gas tight? To do that, we pressurise the system to a smaller, a smaller pressure, which allows us to be able to see any rise in pressure if that valve is passing. In this particular case, we're going to raise it to approximately 10 millibars. The book says 10, 10.5. In fact, the book says 7 to 10. But around that pressure will prove the point. The question quite often comes up, what do we do, or how would we know, if it was leaking the same amount it was passing? This is an indication you may have let by. But if you suspect you do have let by, the next step is to disconnect here and squirt or spray leak detection fluid inside the valve itself. And that is the true test if you do suspect you do have let by. Okay, so we're going to raise the pressure. We've, we've, we've uh, adjusted our YouTube gauge to zero, uh, correctly zero on it. We're now going to turn the gas on. Now, this, is, this can be a little bit tricky. Not the turning on, but the fact that you don't want to overpressurize. You're only looking, remember, between seven and 10 millibars. So you've got to turn it on very, very gently and watch for the pressure rising on the tube uh, very gently. As it starts to rise, turn it off. Now that's approximately uh, eight millibars, which is perfect between seven and 10 millibars. The reason we put some pressure in is uh, if there's no pressure at all in that pipe work, it can take a couple of millibars just to put the pressure in to start raising the actual pressure on the gauge. And the other side of it is if you put too much pressure in, we can get what they call, in the books call it lock up, lock up on the regulator. Now, in reality, it doesn't actually lock, it just closes, but it's always been called lock up. We'll come to that later. Um, now then, once we've got that pressure, the next part of that is now we test that for one minute. We let that stand now for one minute. And what we're watching for, literally, is any movement on that gauge upwards. We're looking to see is that if that valve's passing, that pressure will increase. As long as that pressure doesn't alter, we can assume, we can assume that the valve itself isn't passing gas. Okay, assuming that the, uh, we're happy with the let by test, we've done it for one minute and there's been no rising pressure, we can move straight from that onto the tightness test. Now we need to increase that pressure, of course, up to between 20 and 21 millibars. And we're going to do that exactly the same way uh, by just raising the pressure, turn it on gently, watching the gauge till we get to 20, 21 and uh, turn it off. Now we're going to stabilise for one minute. We need to stabilise because the cold gas coming from the ground, coming into the room, it can either expand, contract, depending on conditions. So the gauge may settle slightly. If it does settle, after one minute, you can stop it up slightly to 20, 21, and then you can do your tightness test. The tightness test after the one minute stabilisation will be two minutes test, and you're looking for, if it's new pipe work, new pipe work on its own, there should be no drop at all. When we say no drop, there is a gauge tolerance, which is approximately a quarter of a millibar. Um, we talk about um, readable and perceivable, about to say. The readable part would be half a millibar. They say on a water gauge, the minimum you can read is half a millibar, but you can see a quarter. And if you can see movement on new pipe work, 
that would technically be uh, a fail and you need to check where that leakage is. If on the other hand, like this system is, it's got existing appliances on it, you're allowed a tolerance, but only existing with appliances connected. For this size of meter, believe it or not, you will be allowed a four millibar drop, a four millibar drop over, over a two minute test. Should you get a four millibar drop, obviously, the first instance would be, would you need to check the appliances anyway? You wouldn't just forget about it. You would always do a test. The biggest test of all though is, even though it's within tolerances, can you smell gas? And if you can, you've got to look for that leak anyway. So you must be aware of the size of the system, size of the meter, and of course, what appliances are connected to that system. Okay, so we're helping with the tightness test. With no visible movement on the gauge, so we need now to remove the equipment. Obviously, the gas is still turned off. Take your test point off, put your, put your test nipple screw back in. Now, remember what I said earlier, this is a very light screw, not a heavy screw. I'll put my screw around now. And when you tighten this up, uh, just literally, it is a, a nip, a nip. But what we must always do, we can now put the gas on, what we must always do is check it with leak detection fluid purely and simply to make sure that isn't leaking. Uh, that is a, a must at the end because you're not actually showing that on the gauge, that is physically your test afterwards. Okay, we're happy with the test, we've done all the checks, whatever, it's just a quick recap for you. Remember, before you do the test, you need to do a visual check. Look at the obvious signs we mentioned earlier, labels missing, make a note of that. Are the, if there are appliances connected to it, is everything connected? Are the, are the isolation valves turned on? Um, if it's a cooker with a drop down lid, don't forget the lid must be up because otherwise the valve will be turned off and you won't be physically testing the appliance. Back to the meter, let my test first, one minute, eight between seven and ten millibars for one minute looking for any rising pressure if the gas valve was passing if you're happy with that move straight on to the tightness test raise the pressure to between 20 21 millibars one minute stabilization with a two minute test remember the existing system with appliances connected on this size of meter you would be allowed a four millibar drop but obviously, if you've got a smell of gas, you will still check out the, you must still trace that smell of gas, basically. You can't walk away whether the tolerance is correct or not. You must, you can't leave a leak. I would be, if, if depending on the installation size, I would also be tempted to check where that leak is anyway. Once you're happy with the tightness test, remove your equipment, test point back in, and remembering to bubble test, LDF, call it, um, leak detection fluid on the test point. Okay, now to follow on from the tightness test, a couple of things we just need to reiterate and just recheck. One of the things we mentioned was uh, earth bonding. Now this obviously we've said hasn't got any. Uh, so we would need to paperwork, in other words, fill a form in to tell the customer and recommend that they get an electrician to check. It could be that the earth bonding is just not visible, but if it isn't, isn't there at all it does need to be upgraded not not directly your problem but is your problem to be aware and to notify the appropriate person now what we're going to do now is just show you a couple of installations with earth bonding just to show you the different problems you can still have even though the earth bonding is there here we have another example of a meter installation with two or three obvious faults again no handle so the customer the end user, the consumer can't turn the gas off in an emergency. Uh, no warning label, in other words, with the uh, contact number, should there be a gas escape or uh, any other problems. And of course, it is the bonding. Notice, uh, although it's connected correctly, it's the incorrect size. This is only a 6mm cable and it should be a 10mm cable. Here we have another meter installation. This time we have an electronic gas meter or an E6 meter. Because of the low volume of gas inside these meters, 
the tolerance for the gas leak or uh, the tolerance for the drop on your YouTube gauge is more because of the smaller volume, uh, which is it's difficult to explain quickly, but we will go into that at another time. You're allowed eight millibars drop on this over a two minute period. But just as an aside on that one, very look at the installation. The main tap handle, the isolation valve is correct, but the label is upside down. It's telling you to move it the other direction. The regulator doesn't have uh, a seal, so that's incorrect. And somebody should be, the gas supplier should be notified with relation to that. The meter itself, notice it does have the label, but it's not been completed. So that's incorrect as well. That's also something that needs to be um, updated. But the good news is the bonding on this one is correct. It's 10 mil cable that's attached to it. And that is, that is the correct size bonding for the uh, earth continuity bond. Thank you very much for that, Russ. Um... Yeah, so that's your tightness testing. I hope you found this video of some use. If you are a trainee, please come over to our, our group on Facebook. We've set up a group on Facebook to help and support new people into the industry. And also if you're doing your acts or anything like that as well, uh, this group may help you with that. Um, so yeah, bob over, um, come and say hello. If you could, please like this video. Comment below if you've got any questions, add a comment. Um, thanks for watching.